Eric had just arrived in Vilvrit and stands before the old wooden gate, peering into the old city. While the buildings themselves aren't much to look at, it does seem very apparent this city has an old history. A dragon! I saw a dragon! What? Eric too saw a dragon, and although it appears that most of the city does not believe the elderly woman, Eric knows her expression. And I've got better things to do than listen to more of your fantasies. You'll see. It was a dragon. It'll kill us all, and then you'll believe me. Nobody believes me, but I tell you, I saw a dragon. What is it, woman? Stand drunk on the job again? Did you hear? The Riverwood trader was wrong. Seemingly, she's no longer interested in talking about the dragon. We'll oblige her and head away for now. Although it is weird that she would change the subject so suddenly. Or is my eyes spot an elf? Hmm. It's to be the friendly sword. For now. Did I see you talking to Sven? Maybe not. Maybe. Never mind. But I would stay away from him if I were you. I don't opinionate it, I see. Now, Rail, what's going on? You two look pretty well done in. <sighs> I can't remember when I last slept. Well, the news you heard about Alfred is true. The Imperials have... Two days ago now, we stopped in Helgen this morning, and I thought it was all over. I had us lined up for the headsman's block and ready to start chopping. The cowards! They wouldn't dare give Ulfric a fair trial. Treason for fighting for your own people. All of Skyrim would have seen the truth then. But then, out of nowhere, a dragon attacked. You don't mean a real with life. It is true, the myself. Empire has shown a worrying amount of cowardice by denying Ulfric Stormcloak his righteous trial. What do you feel? Really what do you people think? Should Ulfric have received the trial? Nobody else has After all, he is a military leader. As far as I, know. I know from a purely pragmatic view, he it would probably be easier just to execute him. But wouldn't that make him a martyr? You and your friend are welcome to stay here as long as you need. Nevertheless, Let me worry about the his cause is righteous, and Eric supports it wholeheartedly. Even if he's currently Please adorned in house. Imperial stay armor, as long as you like. that is entirely you coincidental. Need, just let me know. Trust me, my good watchers. Okay, well. The Nord bears her many gifts and items to me as a show of good and righteous, humble welcome. We will not use her gifts or take them wantonly. Instead, we will only take what is necessary. And seeing as I know Eric will have a very long and very hard trial, we will be taking these healing potions and little else. There is something you could do for me. For all of us here. The Jarl needs to know if there's a dragon on the loose. Riverwood is defenseless. We need to get word to Jarl Valgruf in Whiterun to send whatever troops he can. If you'll do that for me, I'll be in your debt. Sister, I knew we could count on you. 
I ought to get back to work before I missed, but did anyone else escape? Did Ulfric? We have not seen Ulfric for a while. It should be noted that this could be very worrying. He, does, he did seem like a rather hearty person, however. So it is entirely possible. It is entirely possible. But he is still alive. Good luck, brother. We'll have to check. I'll see you later. And yes, Hazel, Gerda could be seen as rather attractive by the right eyes. <laughs> oh well, for now we'll investigate a rumor we heard earlier. Seemingly, a shop has been robbed within town, and it is our good duty as a former citizen of it to investigate, to see if it can be of any hate, help. If nothing else, it will allow us to sell some of our items. So we can get a bit of commerce going. Well, one of us has to do something. I said no. No adventures, no theatrics, no thief chasing. Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. We have stumbled onto a domestic argument, this. seemingly. Oh. <clears throat> ah, the shopkeeper has noticed us. It is entirely okay, my good man. As long as you're gold to pay. I don't know what you overheard, but the Riverwood Trader is still open. Feel free to shop. Uh, yes. Always a curious a fellow. A Eric is break. very quick to investigate what's happened here. Sell. Were only after one this uh, Lucan Valerius, as he's introduced himself as, appears to be of a rather shifty nature. However, his gold is probably good, so we'll still it's sell good. our wares. I've got some coin coming in from he my is obviously no son of Skyrim, yours if you bring my claw back. But you know, an honest merchant is always welcome in Skyrim. Falls Barrow, northeast of town. Yes, so now you don't have to go, do you? Oh, really? Well, I think your new helper here needs a guide. Well, no, I... By the eight. Oh, by the eight. We notice that this Imperial is not of the true Talos worship. It is disheartening. But ultimately, Show we can forgive him for it. Oh, a bit of this and a bit of that. Especially seeing as we need his coin. Well, no, it's, it's mostly principle. Mostly. He does have a lot of gold, so let's get our fill. I oh, didn't learn this much. Uh, cheap foot wraps. The Empire does not provide his prisoners with the best equipment. That much is certain. Not they have much reason to. Okay. We're getting a bit of value from this. Not as much as I would have wanted to, but it's something. Uh I suppose we can sell this. Let's see if he has a proper weapon for Eric. Eric has always been very fond of more brutal weapons. More aggressive weapons, as befitting of his proud nature. Uh, let's see... A battle axe. A warhammer. Hmm. Nolts does tend to favor does tend to favor more aggressive weapons so I think we'll be going with the axe it would have been better if it was steel and I know the warhammer does provide a bit more damage but axes does seem a bit more fitting doesn't it I, I do think it does so let's go with the axe it's rather expensive if, if you can see it 106 76 gold is a lot of g money and we don't have too much at the moment well I'm, I'm being encouraged to pick the hammer 
And I do suppose it is a rather nice weapon, but... Hmm. Okay, let's go with the hammer. It's a bit more expensive, too. But let's do it. So we'll just sell our former weapon. And now that it has served its purpose, we don't want to run around with... <laughs> with inferior imperial equipment, do we? No. We are proud nords, and as such, we will wear the equipment that befits All a right proud nord. There. A good, hefty warhammer. For now, we should uh, try to find some equipment that's... Uh, let's see if he has the any armor. The sooner you find the claw, the sooner our lives can get back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Sure, some I'll, I'll help you with your hammer junk. problem later. Me, I call them treasure. But for now, I need some proper armor. Oh, this is going to be expensive. Oh, damn. 300. 300? Really? Okay, we'll go with the boots. So expensive. Oh, my coin. I don't have enough. I must have something I can sell off. No. Oh, spell books. Always weather. Oh, trying to purchase them. Never mind. Uh, books. I can sell this. Hardly gives me any coin. Okay, you know what? I I think you're right. We'll we'll go All and right. we'll see if we can find some equipment on someone who happens to be dead. That's a bit more convenient. But for now, we're trying to put on as little imperial clothing as we can manage. We have to go through town and across the bridge to get. Yeah, to that's fine. Barrow. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can see it from I, here. I I saw so a mine heading this way. Or rather, Eric saw mine. So, I happen to know that these areas around Riverwood aren't too safe. And, as Eric suspects, bandits do tend to hole up in mines due to their defensive capability. So, we'll just go over there and see if Eric's suspicions happen to be right. Eric pauses while wandering, looking over the beautiful landscape of Skyrim, especially appreciating the more elderly pieces of architecture. Scouting over towards the mountains, he sees the entrance to Bleakfold Barrows, a place he knows rather well from his earlier ventures there. Some of his ancestors were buried there in their times of yore. But visits up there have proven to be rather difficult with bandits infecting the roads. And it has been said by evil tongues that the dead are rising in the ancient tombs. For now, Eric would not ponder long on such things. The mine is close by, and he swears he hears the presence of someone. And indeed, a man stands waiting at the mine, and he has seen him. The confrontation will surely happen. His weapon is already drawn. He tries approaching peacefully. Picked a bad time to get lost, friend. Diplomacy has seemingly failed. <laughs> and as surely as it was expected, Eric gives him a whipping. Pausing shortly to uh, enrich himself with the dropped armor. Although it is of lesser quality, Eric feels as if it's more decent for his ancestors and theirs of the course to not be adorned with the filthy equipment of the Empire. Venturing in, he sees that his choice was correct. There is equipment to be found here, and it can be bought at the iron price. Oh! <laughs> A bit close, but I have a plan. Truly, Eric 
is one of the, this generation's greatest wingers, utilizing both cunning, guile, and uh, the fact that he has two eyes to avoid the trap. Voices in front. He sneaks closer to have a better look. This again. I told you, we have someone standing guard out there. Don't forget the rock trap. So, stop your worrying and get some rest. Your ship is coming up and I don't want you dozing off again like last time. Yes, dozing off can be a rather real danger when you are employed in banditry. Okay. We'll just allow this man to pass. Hopefully, he won't be heading in our direction. For now, we'll just allow him to pass peacefully, and then we'll see if we can get closer to his sleeping mate, so we can um, introduce him to our new weapon. No, oh, okay, that has failed already. That was rather befitting. <laughs> Luckily, a hammer is a rather solid weapon. So let's see what he had. Oh, jewellery. Or gemstones can be sold for a rather good price in the local shops. Arik is aware of that much. So pulling off some of the bandit's items. Oh, his mate is returning. Let's see if we can... What was that? Yep, come on, down. We did get a bit of a hit, so... Eric is going to be limping slightly, his poor hurt leg. Oh, wine. Wine helps Eric tremendously, ignoring the pain with such ease that it should almost seem impossible. Booze and food, together. It's a wonderful medicine against pain. Now some poor chap has fallen. Let's see what he says. Oh, I've been working down here for days now. It's not that scaring to me too. It's these tunnels. I've told them countless times now to add extra support to the weak sections of the tunnel. If only we had more of those wooden beams that we reinforced with bronze bottoms. Honestly, if I hear the earth shift one more time above my head, I'll be so stressed I may stop drinking for good. I mean, what's a north would actually need? I don't know, dear viewers. I don't know. What is a man without his boots? It is an excellent question. The pest, however, proves to be of a delicate, fantastic quality. So, Eric decides to pinch it. The gold does warm his empty pockets. Okay, before we do this, Eric spots another flask of wine. And although he looks around, he finds no more things of interest. Voices. Another figure was found. You check it. You're mine. Oh, another yeah. fellow with a hammer. Surely this will be a fight. Oh, yep. Yeah. Go away. Ah, yes. They were his lessers. Let's see if we can enrich him further. Fur armor does have a very nice value. If nothing else. Steel equipment. A rare find in these frozen wastelands. Good steel is hard to come by. Unless you are one of the major factions of the game, of course. Wolf Skyrim. A hole. An easy way to grab coinage. If you should... Oh. What a fool. It's gonna be easier than I thought. Oh! 
She tried using foul magic on poor Eric, but he had none of it. Instantly smashing in her face with his warhammer. Stuff. Although he has very little trust in magic, Eric is sure to grab it. Mages are always booming with gold. And it is not a pleasure he can deny. More potatoes for the stew. A couple of apples. They are set to keep the physicians at bay. So Eric decides to take it. A bellow. Hmm. It's not the most stealthiest persons. It appears this one has found Eric before he was even within you. <laughs> Eric, however, will make very short work of him, knowing his own martial prowess. A bandit falls, having Larry inflicted a single wound on his back. More steel equipment. Someone there? Another annoying bandit draws near. Seemingly, they all wish to fall before Eric. Uh, found you. Oh. We have found something of great value. A weapon greater than that which we wield. That for some reason deals with the same amount of damage. Surely this proves that despite the lower quality of the metal, it does seem that the Warhammer is so supreme that it transcends such material needs. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Don't talk shit if you can't survive the hit. Eric pauses for a moment, enjoying the sweet luxuries of pre-made food. He pinches what the bandits have gathered in a lair before heading back towards the below. The content seemingly of some value. Eric can surely not allow himself to skip over such loot. Iron ore, although unrefined. Its value is too great to ignore. His skill appears to have been improving, and as such, his hardiness does so too. It is certain that Eric's management with 200 weapons has improved and as such, he has proven to be a far deadlier foe, wielding his great hammer. Iron, of a low quality, he decides not to take it. Mm. But ruminates for a moment upon the possibility of making more of his own equipment. Much to his own annoyance, he does not have the current equipment needed. And determines that he will go to Riverwood's own local smith to purchase equipment and perhaps get a lesson. Walking through the now barren halls of Tom, he finds an exit. And once more the dark, nearly solemn outer area of Skyrim meets him. And he's determined to head back towards Hoverwood, now laden with more equipment than he had before. And despite of the 
safety and protection it provides him, he finds himself so sickened by the Imperial Officer's Helmet and determines to remove it. Although it removes him quite a bit of safety, it is also betrayals the things he finds dear. And as such, clad in armor, more befitting of one of his stature and loyalties, he slowly makes his way back towards Overwood. The weak balls already apparent in the distance. Rather major flaw in the town's defences. They can one day unaccost it from the side. But you know, Riverwood has always been a rather poor community. So, full on stone walls is rather impressive. A wooden palisade would be more average amongst these communities. So perhaps, just perhaps, Riverwood does have a bit of wealth hidden away. Uh, well, it has grown rather late, so Eric decides that he wishes to take part in the pleasures at the tavern. Orgnar, Orgnar, are you listening? Hard not to. The ale is going bad. We need to get a new batch. Did you hear me? Yep, ale's going bad. I guess you don't have potatoes in your ears after all. Just make sure we get a fresh batch in soon. Although the inn is filled with quarrelling, Eric is met with the uplifting sound of a bard playing eagerly on his instrument. It is a familiar and nice sound. And for a moment, he enjoys the ale and peace at the tavern. Letting the refreshing wine he gathered earlier. Refresh him. And as he reaches a mild stupor, having consumed more than a little altar wine, he waits for the bar, wanting... This need a room? Talk to Delphine. A room. Seemingly this is a rather unhelpful fellow. All right, then. Instead, we head towards this... Age Boss, my woman. You're that visitor been poking around. Uh, I've just arrived, lady. I've just been enjoying my drink. Don't be so suspicious. Don't you see that I am a true son of Skyrim? Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Uh, as you can see, gold and septums can make even the most harsh woman change their tune. I'm the innkeeper. The same with any man, no matter how hard. An arm at their hearts are gold makes everyone dance. Okay, he'd appear to have intruded upon the wrong day. Realizing that he's listening to a patriotic tune that ended far too early. Eric pauses for a moment, enjoying the song of freedom and liberty. What are you staring for at? For all true sons of my shut up. A Skyrim. The war keeps most folks away these days. And then as the drink gets to him, he allows himself a moment of rest. Quite a long moment of rest. The bard is still playing his tune. It's a great relief to Eric. The familiarity of the play. And the many instruments the bard seems to pull out from all manners of places is uh, certainly a sight for poor Eric. But he cannot pause for long. Skyrim awaits. You're kind of fuzzy. What's wrong with you? Seemingly another member of the town has been drinking rather heavily. I guess you can't blame him. 
Can we? I think not. Anyway, we have been given a quest, both from my dear friend, Rayloff's parents, but also from the poor innkeeper and shopkeeper who had um, some of his equipment stolen. We cannot allow our poor thing to hold us for long, because those are noble quests. However, we did want to peek around at the blacksmith to get a bit of training in. So we'll just have a worth with Elbow. A person we've known from our youth. Although we haven't had a great deal of conversation with him before. So we most graciously no beg him for permission to use his forge. The grindstone will improve your weapons. Use the table to improve your armor. If you've got the raw materials, you can use the forge to make something new. Gerder's family first settled here as woodcutters a few generations ago. She and Hod run the mill. I make a decent living sharpening axes and fixing the sawmill. It has been rather informative talking to Al, although he does not seem willing to lend us much assistance in the way of learning. So, for now, we will merely return to the shopkeeper to get a bit of um, wealth from her earlier incursion into the mine. We can never have too much of that, after all. Show those thieves not to steal from Luke and Valerius! You bet, man. You bet. Trinkets? As Our soon hands. as I have my That's gold, I'll go for those bandits and ruffians and bleakful barrow who dared to interrupt the grave of my honoured ancestors, Eryxis, nodding gravely as he pawns over the stolen loot. There's much value to be found in equipment, especially when it's handed over so willing to a man as greedy as he can. A helmet would suit us. The head is a valuable area. As such, he barters over a hide helmet, wishing for his beautiful naught face to be protected. Till next time. Ericsson is not a vain man, unlike me. But he would rather not have his head further scarred. As such, he equips a bit of protection for his head. And such ready. Oh yes, you can you can guess that Eric will be dabbling ever so slightly in blacksmithing as soon as a willing teacher comes forth. But for now, Bleakfall Barrows awaits, and as such, Eric checks his equipment, making sure everything is in order, and that he's not locking around too much. After all, Bleakfall Barrows is going to be a rather dangerous place, and locking around too much can slow you down. As such, being light on your foot can be very important. Weird, weird. Let's not notice that. No, but did you see that? Did the deer fall from the heavens? Weird. Lunch. Uh, the rabbit, however, appears to be a rather delicate swimmer and as such, pleased, 
So um, Eric decides to feast, or at least collect, delicate venison of the uh, elk instead. <laughs> yes, indeed, the gift from Talis himself would give great nourishment to, uh, to our dear friend. In front of us, a great city rises up. And rather than pausing, an imperial at all spots him. In front of him, he spots a great sight a beast, a giant, has seemingly snuck into the areas. And rather than pausing, Eric charges forward, bearing his weapon, willingly and heartily trying to come to the rescue of the brave warriors. His flesh must have scared the hammer strikes willingly against the giant you flesh. Come to your basker. You and soon it well. falls. You could make for a decent A strange, wet headed lady approaches, complimenting him on his battle hearty abilities. An outsider, eh? Never heard of the companions? An order of warriors. We are brothers and sisters in honor. And we show up to solve problems if the coin is good enough. Eric is intrigued for a moment about the prospect of earning coin for battling. But is good morals usually tells him that fighting is a thing that must be done for cause rather than for the clink and gold. However, he is rather short on coinage at the moment. So, he inquires. Wishing to get better Not equipment for me to say. so he can fight You'll have war. to talk to Codlack Whitemane up in your Vaskar. Mm. The old man's got a good sense for people. He can look in your eyes and tell your worth. If you go to him, good luck. I'm thinking I need to train some more. Okay. Bleakfold Barrows. It's a fair bit of wave. So, instead we will head to the Yarl. At the moment, warning the Yarl about the coming Blood dragon the wind today. seems to be a priority. A lot of innocent lives depend upon it. And although the shopkeeper promised wealth, lives, especially of those loyal to Skyrim, are more important. Oh, turning his head slightly, Eric spots a strange sight in Skyrim. The desert-prone Khajiit stand before him in their camp. He approaches one of them, an elderly-looking Khajiit, curious about their purpose so close to Skyrim and Ragnar. The roads of Skyrim lead to many dangers. The accents are rare and exotic in comparison to Eric's own blonde way of talking. But still, it appears that Kajid is a merchant and Eric is always in great need of coin. Now he wishes to barter. Take a look. Always being a bit cautious. After all, the Kajid are known for their less than honest way of bartering. Not that uh, Eric wishes to continue um, stereotyping Gajits, but uh, everyone has heard about someone having their things stolen by these long-fingered cat people. Warhammer, although it is a great tool, can also make for a great source of income when sold. 
now. We'll set these. After all, he has little need of mana boosting equipment. Healing, however, is always a great life saving. Clearly, the Khajiit does not appreciate the many values and needs of a potato. So instead, he will sell them rapidly. Not the venison. The venison has been gifted to him by no one else than Talis. Such gifts may not be denied. This great coin in pelts and gems. May your road lead you to warm so, sands. Having now earned a bit of extra income, Eric is certain and sure to head in the right one. Greeting the passing Nords merrily. He's not been in Rightburn for a long, long time, and instead, pauses for a moment. Halt! It is close with the guard. dragons about. Official it does seem rather only. weird that the entirety of Rightburn is closed. Although the presence of a dragon shouldn't lead to a lot of closing of the street entrances. After all, they do have access to rings. So, entering a gate doesn't seem their primary way. Nevertheless, we have been told to do it. And to display Eric's suave way of persuasion, we will be telling this good man that we have a purpose. Fine. But we'll be keeping an eye on you. Eric's silver tongue has once again saved the world. Imperial uniform does not need Eric in a great mood. However, the presence of a smith can be rather important for him. He might have a purpose of reaching the Jarl's lofty halls. However, equipment can be rather useful too. Have it your way. I'll take the job, but don't expect a miracle. Mm, the Imperial soldier leaves. Got some good pieces. And Eric here if goes in by. for the kill. More inside. I don't claim to be the best blacksmith in White Run. Yorland Greymane's got that honor. Man's steel is legendary. Setting a chance to learn more. Chance. Eric tries a more um, roundabout way, inquiring instead if he can be allowed to aid rather than learn from the smith. Yes, actually. How about you smith me an iron dagger? Here's everything These smiths make of right are very quick to trust Eric. It must be his wholesome appearance. Don't forget After to check all, inside the shop who would not allow a man such as this to work for them? That is a good question. Although Eric himself is not the greatest of smith, he has tried something like this before. And as such, the form of smith smithing doesn't take him too long. Remember, and soon, very soon, a dagger Have has you taken my form. Father? I help my father in more ways than people realize. Not bad, but it's a little dull. How about you sharpen it up? Eric is rather offended by the implications of his handiwork being of a subpar quality, but resigns himself to improve his handiwork. Until Instead of listening time. to the dull lies of this Skyrim wrench. That was clearly not the sharpening stone. The Perhaps my the, uh, provides the Jarl is his alone? Huh. Let's just say I advise the advisor and leave it at that. Yeah. 
Okay, lady. Okay. It does seem rather tempting to improve our own weapon over the dagger. But for now, we will resist temptation. Even if it does seem difficult for Ericsson. After all, his weapon is of a impo more important quality to him. I don't claim to be the best blacksmith. Yes, 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 yes. That's You fine. put time into your blades, they'll serve you well when you need them. You want to keep helping? How about you make some armor? Let's start by tanning some leather on the rack. Yes, we do have quite a bit of leather, don't we? Yes. Leather. Okay. I will do it for now. Yes? Yes, the leather. Ah, good. A lot of weapons and armor need leather for straps fitting. That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you can make for a sure. hide helmet. Here's the rest of what you need. Okay, thank you. Let's Don't see. Don't forget to check inside the shop if you need anything. Yes, yes, yes. Your advertising starting to get rather bothersome. For now, let's try if we can make the helmet. See, so... You get it, desires. Have you met my father? Here's your helmet. Up at Dragon's Reach. Miss Avenici. Wow, some of you might assume this to be Italian. However, she's very clearly either a red guard, an imperial, or Nord. I can't really say. I believe her father's a Nord, so. I should hire you to be my assistant at this rate. Thank Let's you. The fit. Seemingly Can't she's now learned to appreciate my talents. Okay. I'll well. take my leave then. Yep. Do that. I have a helmet I need to improve. Got some good pieces out here if you're looking to buy. I don't claim to be the best. You have talent. Why don't you keep that dagger and helmet? Maybe you will remember me when you're making sky. Don't count on it. I will most likely be admiring myself far too much. Forge steel, huh? I help my father more way than And now that his trade has been perfected a bit more. Our good friend is set soft to improve on his warhammer. Quality on his warhammer, after all. It's a great source of pride, Ferric. All right. Guards and citizens alike hustle to White One Streets. As Eric slowly makes his way towards the Jarl's hold. Mister, could you spare a coin? A coin? A voice, rather, catches his attention. Hit by a dragon. One of those horrors comes here. We'll and a child Just spots his eye, old, please? desperately begging a coin. Oh, thank you. Divines, bless your kind heart. It's... it's what Brennan said I should do. He's the only one that's been nice to me since, since Mama, since she died. My aunt and uncle took over our farm and threw me out. Remembers his own mother for a moment. For remembers the way she here, screamed as the bandit struck her. I don't know what to do. I miss her so much. And feels a strange bond of kinship with this poor lady, this poor young lady, who suffers the very same fate as he. Unfortunately. Currently, his only home is smoldering and ash. So he has little he can provide. Downhearted, he turns away his gaze, turns his back, leaving the young lady. You're the best. Can you be my father? A young, innocent question nearly breaks his heart. 
Instead, he focuses on the keen words of Heimske and his preaching to mighty Talus. He steps forth and prays, receiving Talus' proud blessing. But for now, the Jarl, the Jarl of Reitman, awaits. seems rather aggressive. Surely, Barry would not be struck down no, in the Jarl's main hall. Gerda sent me. Riverwood is in danger. As House Carl, my job is to deal with all dangers that threaten the Jarl or his people. So you have my... You know about Helgen? The Jarl will want to speak to you personally. This bureaucracy is rather tiring, Farrakh. So, you were at Helgen? You saw this dragon with your own eyes? Mm. Although Eric takes no shame in the fact that he was about to execu be executed like a storm cloak, it does seem wiser to take a more diplomatic road for now. Should have guessed Ulfric would be mixed up in this. Jarl Balgruf seemingly has very little faith. Shall we continue to trust Ulfric. in the strength of our walls? Eric makes no dragon? After all, Lord, he must be certain who his friend once. and foe it's in the most on the storm immediate danger. cause. The cause of all two sons of Skyrim. He'll assume we're preparing to join Ulfric's side and attack him. We should Enough. not. I'll not stand idly by while a dragon burns my hold and slaughters my people. Irileth, send a detachment to Riverwood at once. Yes, my Jarl. If you'll excuse me, I'll return to my duties. That would be best. Well done. You sought me out on your own initiative. You've done White Run a service. I not quite on his own initiative, but take this as a small let's not um, mar the beautiful lie. Thing you could do for me, suitable for someone of your particular talents, perhaps. Come, let's go find Faringar, my court wizard. He's been looking into a matter related to these dragons and rumors of dragons. Yeah, the whining of children. Such a tiresome, tiresome noise. All you ever do is complain about what you want. You're a spoiled baby. I'm going to tell Father you said that. He'll tan your hide for sure. Spoiled children. Not last very long. Father Sky. says I'm too young to train with the sword, so I practice with my fist. Yes, the Shong Frota has the spirit of a true Nord. If only his sister was a bit more. One of the new servants? Remember that I like my meat rare. Would it be so heinous a crime? Absurd that you can't get good sweet rolls in the skeever hole of a Just a, a city. small push. Oh well. Eric is made of sterner stuff and won't do the child's errant words harm him. Faringar, I think I've found someone who can help you with your dragon project. Go ahead and fill him in with all the details. So the Jarl thinks you can be of use to me. Oh yes, he must be referring to my research into the dragons. Yes, I could use someone to fetch something for me. Well, when I say fetch, I really mean delve into a dangerous ruin in search of an ancient stone tablet that may or may not actually be there. Well, this is not beyond Eric's many talents. After all, did he not best an entire 
mine filtered feral bandits. I think he did. Eric does not doubt for a moment that he is far beyond this quest, but for the good of White Run and Ruid, he accepts it. Straight to the point, eh? No need for tedious hows and whys. I like that. Leave those details to your betters, am I right? I, uh, learned of a certain stone tablet said to be housed in Bleak Falls Barrow. A dragon stone said to contain a map of dragon burial sites. Go to Bleak Falls Barrow, find this tablet, no doubt interred in the main chamber, and bring it to me. Simplicity itself. Bleak Falls Barrows. The name catches his attention. But it seems fortunate that he was heading in that very direction already. Although it was rather inconvenient and delayed by this side errand. But now, his purpose is clear. And his goal and method, even more so. He's heading to Bleak Falls Barrow. Off to Bleak Falls Barrow with you. The Anything we can do is good the same. The There's much to be learned in those damp elderly cabins. Where his ancestors rest. <laughs> no time to dawdle, after all. Eric is a man with purpose, and none greater than protecting his former home of Riverwood. Although his home is little more than ashes, it is still his honor to help those who still live within Riverwood. Ulfred, patron of the great clan. There's no time for brackets, however. Uh, go away. Stormcloaks, Imperials, Dragons. Yes, House of Light. We'll leave immediately. Just us against the Dragon? Is that it? We can't afford to send anyone else. We don't know where. <laughs> Seemingly, Right One has been turned a bit upside down by the quests we just fulfilled. People are marching forth to protect the world, and although it is a good start, aiding the Yarl, in spite of his anti stormcloak tendencies, it might be a good, helpful start. Rain, of course, as it is so common in Skyrim, begins pouring down. Steady stream of redness in the heavens, washing away the filth so easily afflicted upon you in Skyrim. He does not need to journey far, but the journey will be cold and unpleasant. You can already see the first initial steps to bleak old barrows, and the old ruin stretching out in front of him. The road is filled with many perils. And only the strong are fortunate. A beast. Hunting. Although it does not appear to give him any attention. Caution is still the most. Ah, he spoke too soon. The beast has turned him. He turned to water. Uh, but he makes very easy work of it, reducing it to a smattering of blood and sinew. Instead, he begins a long, tenuous trek on the mountainside, looking for natural inclination to commence up against. After all, the steep hillside itself is not too easy to climb. So better roads must be found. Spotting what appears to be the start of a road, he begins making his way up. The air quickly growing colder, and much of his skin is barred. A moment he considers turning back towards right one. The warmth of a nearby inn, being a strong temptation. But yet, he has promised to do much for this poor town. Instead, 
He continues hearing the howls of wolves and other fell beasts fall rather easily under his hammer. And he continues this trick. The howling wind, as it is so common to do in these white barren areas, leaves very little hidden. And he is sure that he's going in the right direction. After all, as long as he's heading upwards, he cannot be going too much in the wrong direction. Spotting the start of these ancient pillars is now certain that he is indeed going the right way. However, living figures perch upon the hillside, and he slowly creeps closer to ascertain what purpose they hold here. In this frozen wasteland, an oak this does not bode well. You picked a bad time to get lost. <laughs> Aggressors are always a bit down by the hand. Eric he has little patience for their wanton attempts to murder him. Instead he strips them of their most valu valuable items and begins cont oh, and gold. And begins slaughtering more of them, seemingly. And now, having found equipment far better than his own, he begins to arc his work of stripping into his other set of gear. Iron, after all, provides far more security. And fur and leather. Coinage has been left by the wild bandits. Jackpot. A chess. What valuables lies within? Coin and potion. Both will warm his pockets. For now, at least. And although he holds little trust for magic, a well brewed potion has an equally good effect. If you have a reliable seller, of course. It has been known for certain alchemists to give you faulty potions, making you anything from a newt to even more despicable creatures. Then again, why would a bandit hide away a potion for luck picking if not for the purpose of using it? They hardly seemed like intelligent fellows, so Eric very much doubt that they were going to poison him. With it. Yeah. <laughs> The armor provides much safety. And Eric is quick to collect the items of the dead, adding him to his growing board of items. His experience continues to grow. Wanting to protect himself better, he invests this moment of training into the ability of protecting himself with hardy, solid armor.
go. Well, I actually try to can avoid things a great deal when you are struck. Solid steel plane mail is the best thing to protect you. So that's heading up the stairs and entering the ancient steel walls. Eric pauses for a moment to reflect after the things he's been through. And for now, a small chapter of Eric Erikson's life comes to an end. And we'll be continuing the story in the next part of the saga of Eric Erikson. For now, I bid you all a pleasant evening. I might do a bit of streaming later, if the uh, will should strike me. For now, I am in need of a, a bit of a pause. Talking like this for, um, I would assume, less than an hour. A bit more than an hour, actually. It can grow rather tiresome. But for now, I wish you all a pleasant evening. And I'll be seeing you for the next installment.